shapes change. So uh, go ahead, Dave. Uh, so uh, if you watch the previous video and uh, you, you see now the definition of uh, the derivative as described and uh, now even with x instead of using a uh, we can uh, use the same thing so uh, uh, you know if we you know the the derivatives that x f of prime of x can be interpreted geometrically as the slope of the tangent line which uh, we talked about uh, now several times the function f of prime is called the derivative of f because it has been derived from f by the limiting operation of if the equation two, the domain of f prime is going to be the set um, of x such that f of prime exists. So uh, the derivative must be exist uh, or must exist, and maybe smaller, of course, than the domain of f. Um, so here is a you know a function f of x. Uh, we're going to look at this function and try to get an understanding to uh, the derivative function there. So we're gonna look at, uh, kind of if you, if you trace this and keep in mind the idea of the slope. So uh, as here it comes and it gets flat, uh, so the slope is kind of zero, which means if you graph the derivative at that point, uh, it's gonna intercept the x-axis, so it's gonna be zero. And similarly, as it rises here, so these are the first ones we look at. Uh, it becomes flat again, then it turns, uh, and means uh, the slope there is zero, which means uh, the first derivative is zero. So, and you see that happening again, right? Uh, and what else? Um, so between these two points, uh, you can see that the slope there is rising, so it is rising. And uh, let's take an example, let's take this point here. This point here is uh, x is five, and the slope at that point is uh, three halves, or 1.5. So if I want to draw this point on the, the derivative graphs uh, graph, I should use five for x, and 1.5 for the slope. That's gonna be the y, because that's the f prime, right? So which is this one? So you see that's how it's, it's graphed. So now you, you kind of get the idea of transitioning between the function graph and the derivative graph. And uh, as you see as well here, um, uh, you can repeat this procedure many times. And if the slope is positive, it's rising, and it should be rising as well there. And if it's negative, then it should be uh, negative there. So, uh, and here's some more information for you. Between A and B, the tangent have positive slopes, all right? So between A and B, it has positive slopes. And so similarly, um, F of prime is positive there as well, right? And you can see, f of prime is positive, which means it's staying above uh, the, the x-axis. Uh, it's staying above, so it's positive there. And uh, between b and c, this is a negative slope, right? Coming down, right? And that's, you know, for the translation for the derivative means a negative slope means it's going to be below the x-axis there that's negative y value, which is the, the f prime here. So that's what are these two important notes there to help you understand. Uh, additionally, uh, the other two points I talked about, for example, when it's uh, horizontal and uh, uh, the derivative intercepts the x-axis. So here are some other ideas. If you see this curve coming towards zero, it goes, it becomes too steep, right? Uh, so when you take the derivative around this region, it's gonna be like steep there, right? 
So that's the idea. But as it goes this way, it goes and it slows down, right? And here the same thing for the derivative. It comes and it becomes flatter and uh, slow, it slows down, right? Uh, so you'll, you'll talk more about these and you understand what's going on. Um, and this is the note for it. Uh, so the other notation we'll be using uh, f prime for the derivatives and because you know the function f of x is can be described as y so it can be y prime or it can be dy over dx remember not that delta it's a dy over dx or df over dx or d over dx of so f of x so these are different ways of notation of describing let's say uh, the derivative and here with respect to x um, the derivative of f of x with respect to x uh, and d is the differentiation operator because uh, they indicate the differentiation right so dy over dx if you compare it back to the original idea we talked about the slope of that delta y over delta x as delta x or h approaching zero. So it is the limit. So now you can see the derivative is the limit of that change or that rate of change. Uh, some other ways of describing as well, if it's uh, Leibniz came up with this notation for a specific value x equal a, uh, it can be done that way. A function f is differentiable at a if f of prime exists. So it is differentiable if f prime of a exists. Um, and it is a differentiable over an open interval uh, if it is differentiable at every number or point in the interval. Uh, so uh, I think I'll show you one thing here more uh, before talking about this is, um, let's see, what is that picture? Yeah, this one. So before we talk more about the examples, uh, how can a function fail to be differentiable? Uh, of course, if there is a corner, right? Um, and uh, as you see here, uh, if, if, it's, uh, if there is a discontinuity, right? And if there is that, uh, I talked about this in one video, a, a vertical tangent. If there is a vertical tangent, remember for the slope, for the vertical line, it's indefined. So these are the three cases. So if you take the video of the limits, continuity, the three, three, three things I talked about, here there is another three things to know. When does a, a function fail to be di differentiable is in these three cases. If it takes a sharp turn, uh, and it, if it is discontinuous, and if it has a vertical tension. And um, here, uh, we, this is just an example to show something like that uh, for the corner. And is f of x differentiable or not? And we know that the absolute value of x takes a, a corner there. So since it has this corner, no, it's not differentiable, right? So uh, one way to investigate, uh, of course, f of x, if x is positive here, uh, the absolute value of x is gonna be x. But by definition of absolute value, if x is on this side, which is negative, then the absolute value of a negative, it has to be the opposite, all right? Uh, this may be sometimes confusing, but think about it as the absolute value of negative five is five. The absolute value of five is five. So this is, this is opposite, which is negative, negative five. That's how we got five in the first place. So if x is negative, negative five is positive. So that's how this is gonna be uh, set up. So the absolute value of x, and um, we set up the same thing as we did previously with different Scotian formula for x plus h. 
uh, or a plus h, but now we're talking to functions, so we use x instead a, and uh, you know you get one uh, from kind uh, you know the right side. And if you do this from the left side, which means which means you use the absolute value definition there, then uh, you're going to get negative h over h, the same work, which is negative 1, which means the limit from the left and right are not equal. So for the right, we get 1. From this one, is negative 1. So they are not equal. And uh, just to summarize it quickly uh, so if we do you know of course that limit means the derivative from the right side is one from the left side is negative one and if you want to graph this it uh, this is the graph you have there is this way and this way right and because you see this is discontinuous uh, which means it fails um, that test or one of those three things I, I mentioned. So um, it's not differentiable. So if F is differentiable at A, then F is continuous at A. So this is a theorem. So if it is differentiable, it means it is continuous, but the converse, of course, doesn't, this doesn't, uh, is not necessarily correct. There are functions that are continuous, but not differentiable. Um, all right, so I think I talked about this one. Um, uh, I explained these three cases that you need to know. And uh, after that, uh, it's just a matter of repeating. Um, we can find the second derivative we can find the third one. It depends on what type of applications and what rate we're, we are interested in. So, um, so for example, um, the position function, uh, the, you take the first, um, it gives you derivative, it gives you the velocity, uh, which is the rate of change of the position. Then if you take the rate of change of the velocity, it gives you the acceleration. All right, so this is the first derivative and this is the second one. So you see, uh, so um, uh, this is uh, interesting and it has applications. And uh, now we need to understand uh, kind of the connections between the graphs. So uh, the process is going to be same. Once you find the first one, you apply the limit again to find the second one. And once we move to chapter three with the formulas, then you start using formulas. But I think this will help you understand everything going on. So uh, for this type of function, uh, we can do the first derivative and we, uh, we find three X squared minus one. Then we use that again. Uh, just like we did in previous examples to find the second one and it's going to be 6x and now you can see uh, how f and f prime and uh, uh, second derivative they are changed all right some say double prime whatever uh, first derivative second derivative first, um, prime double prime whichever and uh, you need to see uh, when the curve we see gets flat, means it's zero there, right? And when this one becomes flat, the its second one, its derivatives becomes zero, right? And uh, when this slope is positive between these points, this one has to be above the, um, the x-axis. So we, we'll see this in some examples. And this just talks about uh, the idea I talked about, uh, the position, the acceleration, and uh, the velocity. And of course, there is even the third der derivative, which that drastic change in um, velocity, which is the jerk there. And you can look at 
this definition a little more when there is a sudden change of acceleration. And uh, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about this more when we get to it. Um, uh, and we can just expand and say the end derivative, which is like the fifth or the sixth or whatever. So uh, probably I'll stop here and continue uh, on the next part with the uh, examples from the homework. All right, so uh, three, uh, two point eight. Uh, if we look at this function now, how would we expect uh, the other to look like? Uh, so up to this point here, uh, let's say this point. So here you see a constant down slope, negative slope. Uh, so it's constant, so that its derivative is gonna be a constant slope, which means a constant function. But it is negative, so it is below the x-axis. Something like this. Then between this point and this y-axis, it goes up and it is a, a constant slope. So a constant means a constant function by its positive. So let's say some value like this. We'll just, and now it does it again. Uh, and it depends if the, this slope is, uh, you know, different than this one, it looks like, um, you know, so they're not gonna be the same values. So something like this. And uh, if this one, of course, is not as steep as this one, so something like this. Um, uh, for number two, let's see what this question is about. Um, uh, trace or copy the graph of the given function. Uh, then, uh, of course, based on what I, we talked about here, what do we think should happen? Well, this is a vertical slope, right? Or tangent line, which means undefined. If it's undefined, means the function or the derivative function is gonna be, um, in, remember for the function, if it's undefined, like one over X, you get that vertical asymptote. So at this here, you're gonna have some type of vertical asymptote. Right, so the, the function is gonna go, by well, it's going up uh, something like this. So you'll have a few multiple choice graphs and you can uh, pick one of them, uh, you know, and you can see that uh, the slope is staying consistently, uh, you know, this way positive and it's staying positive right so the graph is expected to be above the x-axis because you may have a graph that looks like it, this one and it's below uh you know the x-axis but that's below means uh negative so for number three um I'll give you a minute to think about it because we did this work already. So probably it's the same work, but think about it for a second. Okay, so we did this few times. So I want you to try it. You know, you're gonna say, uh, uh, find the derivative. So now you're not using a specific thing. You're just gonna say X approaches um, uh, H. each approaches zero of uh, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, right? And you just do like we did so far up to now, and um, you're gonna use x plus h there, x plus h there. You're gonna find it, 
Then you're going to put 2x there, so which is 2x minus 7x squared there. And you subtract and, you know, try it uh, and see. At the end, you should get, and you cancel the h. Uh, then, uh, since this is of t, let's just keep it as of, of t. Yeah. Yeah, because whatever the variable we have in the function is what we'll be using. So let's just use it of okay so let me show that part and I'll, I'll give you the answer because by now once and i want you of course to do 2.8 without doing 2.7 so you should do 2.7 before 2.8 and um so you get 2 t plus h minus 7 2 plus uh, t plus h squared minus and of course for 2t minus 7t squared over h. And uh, you know, at the end you should get 2 minus 14, and this is a derivative. So the goal from this question is to investigate the domain. Um, this is a, a parabola, so the domain of the function is negative infinity to infinity. And this comes as a straight line, so uh, its domain is same, negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Uh, now I'll, I'll, I'll do this one because it's different and uh, it, it does look like something uh, uh, it is something like we've done in limits, but not uh, in 2.7. So I'll go over this one. So g of prime of x is the limit as h approaches zero of uh, five minus, now the first one, you know, we try always is g of uh, x plus h. That's the first one we try. Uh, x plus h, this is in the square root. And the second one we try is g of x, which is gonna be the same over h. Then we did this, you know, that's why I talked about before, uh, even if you have different techniques or something to do the other limits and stuff, uh, you, you learn these manipulations because they come handy later on, and this is one of them. So we did here when we rationalize numerator, uh, and uh, we can do that here, five minus x plus h uh, times, uh, Five minus x, and do the same thing here. All right, so we uh, we rationalize the numerator, and uh, once we do that, uh, we we're gonna have that difference of square at the top here. And so I mentioned uh, the shortcut for difference of squares is gonna be this squared which is minus five minus uh, in parentheses x plus h. Um, all right, so that's a squared minus this one squared, which is five minus x over the h times this here. And uh, five, so this top part here is gonna be five minus x minus h minus five plus x. So five minus five, negative x plus x, negative h and h and five minus x plus h plus five minus x 
limit as h which is zero this cancels and would leave us with now putting uh, zero for h will be five minus x right five minus x oh. All right, so this is zero, five minus x, five minus six, which is two. So the limit is one, two, or five minus x. Okay, so that's it. Um, then um, I think I should just remove this because I already did it. I already put zero for H to switch now to calculate the limit. So that's it. So that's the formula for it. And uh, looking at this, uh, we know the square root, this five minus X must be greater than zero for this to be defined because the square root cannot be negative, right? It cannot equal to zero because the denominator cannot be zero. So five cannot be X. So we have to do uh, uh, strictly greater than zero. So for the domain, right? Uh, so five uh, uh, is greater than X. So the domain of the, the this derivative, which is G prime is going to be negative infinity five, uh, not uh, bracket parenthesis because it's not included, so. All right. Um, so the question, uh, what about the function? Uh, does it have the same domain? Um, it doesn't have to have the same domain. So if we look at this, uh, it's the same thing. However, here, f 5 minus 5 equals 0, it's fine. The square root of 0 is 0. So the, the only difference here is five can be included. So the domain of G. Right. So sometimes the, the domain of the derivative is gonna be less than the domain of the function. And this is an example where it is less. All right. Um, now uh, let's look at uh, number seven and uh, talk about the interpretation of these. Uh, I think I explained it a little bit. Uh, so you want to uh, ask yourself, maybe pause the video and ask yourself which one is the function, which one is its first derivative, and which one is its second derivative based on uh, what we talked about. All right. So... Uh, you can start with one and try, you know, if you say B is the derivative of A, so when, uh, you know, and, and you can check. So this one, this horizontal, this is zero. So this must be a derivative of this one. All right, and what else? Uh, for A it comes, then you get uh, a horizontal, and this comes to zero. So B must be the derivative of A. And, um, you know, this kind of makes it uh, uh, easier for this one to figure 